Grace and peace. Grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace. Is it too dark or is it okay? Because it's late at night, like, and I, I'm really trying to chill. Grace and peace, Apostle. Thanks for inviting your followers. Yeah, I'm like, ugh, I made it on. I did it. Like, so we're in here. Like, so um, if you guys can give me, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> We're going to do it like 20 minutes. It's my art, Shantae, Grace and Peace. I think I just started following you on um, Facebook maybe like seven days ago. Rudo Maritza, Grace and Peace to you. Tynetta, Grace and Peace, thanks for coming on. Thanks for inviting your followers. I'm not going to be on here long. Okay. is my uh, Tell me if my service is bad. Is my service bad or is my service okay? John and Peacut, what's up? Let me know. While you're doing that, I just want to give you like an intro or an overview of what this is going to be about. It's going to be about um, innovation. And if, if you're not one that thinks that you're really innovative, it's okay because this is for people that are and then for people that, that need to embrace them. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. So, um, yeah, that's what we're about to talk about. And I actually posted on Facebook <laughs> like a couple of hours ago. I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to get on Periscope. Like, I'm really not trying to because I'm trying to chill. But I'm going to get on here tonight and um, talk about something. It's going to be late. And so when I said that, I really didn't know what I was going to talk about. I just felt compelled because I'm so full of stuff, right? But God, I'm so full and the Lord is, is shifting me and I, I kind of resisted it a little bit, but... He's like, no, you don't have a choice anymore. I'm so full that I cannot write as quickly as things are coming. Like, I can't. Like, I got three prophetic words this week. One on Monday, which is about the God of justice, you know, coming for us to repay. And I talked about that. The next one came on Thursday, which is about um, cross-pollination, how God wants to deal with us in the area of outreach where he wants to diversify you internally and then he wants to diversify your connections and then the third one started coming today i'm opening up my daughter's treasure box and i see something that i had done when i was a child in there and he's like i'm unearthing treasures and you all you know how the scripture talks about how we're earthing um you know we're earthen vessels you know we're treasures um we have treasures in jars of clay well he's like you know you're this vessel but i got treasures that i want to unearth out of you so i'm like ah so it's just coming too quickly for me to honestly write i gotta talk so this what i'm going to talk to you about is something that started um grieving me a little bit yeah a lot of it um dope <laughs> grieving me a lot of it probably a couple of weeks ago so it's not not so old okay it's not so old and it's just about innovation and how the church needs to be in the forefront of innovation and how god wants to put us there but it's like he's got to catch us up first like we're really really behind in a sense so i'm just going to start talking to you about a couple of things and then I'll go and kind of spill. And if you guys want to shoot questions at me, go for it. Do what you want to do. If my service goes out at any point, let me know. Like if the connection is poor, I'm going to jump off and come back on and maybe connect to my Wi-Fi. So just let me know. I'll um, explain that a little bit more, Gigi. I'm sorry. I have like a thousand thoughts running through my head. So um, you said, oh, yeah, it is strange because we got the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> All right, so people are naturally uneasy about new things. This isn't necessarily a bad quality you have. It's actually part of your biology. Um, you know, it's a survival mechanism. You know, you get fearful of new things. You're apprehensive about them. You're less likely to try them. You know, you're more prone to survive, right? Okay, but sometimes it's bad. Like, on the negative end of things, this attitude becomes restric restrictive. Like, you can't do anything. You can't grow. You can't move. You don't want to try new things. You're not flexible and destructive, right? Because complacency kills, Proverbs 1 and 32. All right, so, um, for example, written language can you believe it wasn't eagerly embraced by ancient societies and surprisingly one of its contingents was Plato Plato was this really really smart philosopher like he was super de duper smart like people quote his stuff now some of it you might not agree with but who agrees with everything everybody has to say right so Plato didn't really agree with um, writing at first. So this proves that smart people can miss things too. Grace and peace to you. Um, in the organized mind, 
Thinking straight in the age of information overload, neuroscientist David Levitin writes, the appearance of writing some 5,000 years ago was not met with unbridled um, enthusiasm. Many saw it as technology gone too far. Can you believe it? Writing, they thought, it as, thought of it as technology gone too far. Um, they thought of it as a demonic invention. <laughs> Blessings to you. A demonic invention that would rot the mind and needed to be stopped. This is what they thought of writing. I understand caution, but much of what we credit as caution is mislabeled ignorance. So like it's it, a lot of stuff that we're apprehensive about. It's not out of caution. It's just because we're ignorant, not meaning that we're stupid, but just that we don't know. And a lot of times we, we don't search matters out. We don't research things. There's a proverb that, that says it's not good to have zeal without knowledge or to be hasty in this the way. And that's the NIV version 1984. But it says it's not good to have zeal without knowledge. So you should never be enthusiastic about anything that you don't know about. And like when we push things off and we're ignorant about them, you know, we're having zeal without knowledge because we haven't researched the thing out. You know what I'm saying? It's not just about you. That proverb isn't just speaking to you just running off and doing stuff without knowing about it. It also is you running off and, and saying that something is bad or demonic because you don't know about it. You know what I'm saying? All right. So back to this. As a Christian, you should especially, especially remain ready for new things. Because God has an unlimited supply of new things he wants to share. I'm convinced most Christians don't believe themselves when they quote Isaiah 43 and 19 or 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, which talks about God revealing new things. Then um, when God responds to his word about these new things coming, these things that we've quoted, releasing it, we um, either can't discern it as an answered prayer or we chalk it up as evil, kind of like writing. You know, they thought writing was demonic. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So out with the old, in with the new, it's time to grow. We should always remain open to discovering, exploring, and adopting new things. In Doug Addison's How to Bring Revival online webinar, he records, people in our culture are changing and, our, and most of our ways of communicating and expressing our faith are still based on older models and methods that worked decades ago. Let that sink in for a moment. So people in our culture are changing, time is progressing, but we're still using old models and methods that worked decades ago. It's not gonna work now, you know what I'm saying? It's not gonna work with the people now. It's not gonna work in the age that we're in now, you know what I'm saying? All right, so beyond this being so true, the old models and methods used to appeal to past generations will not work for the emerging mass of influencers driving the media, the economy, and the policies of our today and tomorrow. So the people that were called to influence, they're, they're creating and shaping the future, but we're using stuff from decades ago to try to captivate them. Like we're not even captivating them, but they're not only captivating our people, they're taking over for the future. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, let me know if I get too excited. You need to embrace what's new. Millennials matter. This is not just a one generational um, group thing. God is bridging and merging generations. I wrote about something on cross-generational collaborations on the smokingprofit.com. That was earlier this year. I think it's February, maybe. Go read that. But um, in 2016, the Lord, as I'm going to sleep, he gave me a vision and I saw people just running like in teens and they were just they were just getting it through. I saw different scenes. It was crazy. It was kind of like, you know how um, it, people that um, do direct TV movie shows have different scenes that people can go through. It's like different scenes were behind these people as they were just running. But the Lord gave me a word off of that. And part of it was um, cross, excuse me, generational bridging, that he was bridging the generations together. So this is not just about one age group, but millennials do matter, okay? So according to the Pew Research Center, as of April 2016, millennials are America's largest living generation. They're the largest living generation, okay? Um, I think the generation that's close with them is not Gen X. It's baby boomer, boomers. So it's millennials, 
then you got Gen X, and then you got the baby boomers, and so forth, and people going down. All right, so um, m meaning millennials are shaping everything from your basic shopping experience, present market demands, to politics, and so forth. Millennials are influencing in our present and our future at alarming rates. Their influence is something the body of Christ can't afford to lose. Now, this doesn't mean that millennials are more important than any other generation. Too much focus here will lead to negligence in other areas. And that's probably a part of our problem, like with, with the church in the past. And I love the church because it's God's baby. I am the church. You know what I'm saying? But like we, we focus and hone in on too much of one thing. And it's like, okay, you just focus on this one generational group. But what happens when they get older? You know what I'm saying? What happened when the generation dies off? You've left the ones that are emerging behind. And I really don't believe in a next generation because I believe that God wants to deal with all of us now. I believe that God wants to use our children and the school systems. I do because they're able to talk to the people and not get in trouble. We can't go in there and talk to them. You know what I'm saying? But our kids can go in there and talk to them, right? All right. So let me get back to this. Sorry. <laughs> all right. So um, what this does mean is cross-generational partnerships are necessary, and each group must converge into a single stream to become more effective. The Lord showed me one night I was um, giving my daughter a bath, and um, she wanted to put her hand in the water, and I said, you can't do it because it's, it's hot. And she's like, but you just did. And I'm like, you know, my skin's a little bit more conditioned to deal with that like your skin is fresh and young you can't handle all of that and then the lord brought to mind something i seen my 80 year old grandmother do she put her hand in the stove one day and pulled out a pan like with no like pot holder or anything i'm like man what are you doing like i could never do that so are, there are things that each generation possesses right when i saw that the lord was like there is stuff that these older generations possess that they've been conditioned for, the wisdom that they have that you don't have. Like, you need to get with them. But there's things that you got that they need too, so y'all need to come together, okay? All right, so times have shifted, and those that stick with old models, we become like old models. What happens to old models? They become obsolete and utterly useless, right? And that's the example the Lord gave me, Gigi, Moses, and, um, and Joshua, because Joshua was older, yes, but they were they were of different generations, and he bridged them together. But um, I believe that every faith-based organization needs um, an innovative team as a resource to strengthen members, but also to advance the kingdom of God outside of the church. We should not be creating material that just markets to each other. We should not be creating material to captivate the Christian, we should be creating material that can captivate a broad range of audiences, especially the unbeliever, because that's who God has called us to go after. Okay, grace and peace. Thanks for coming on. But um, so for for, you know, leaders, for for people that aren't necessarily used to creatives and their spontaneity and their um, differences, don't hinder your creatives. Don't frustrate them by trying to restrict their gift. You know, um, one of the most frustrating things for me is um, doing work for someone and them telling me what they want. In my mind, I'm like, you can just do it yourself if you're telling me what you want. like, Or you can just leave me be and let the Lord deal with me. And I have the hardest times um, creating things for people that tell me they want this and this and that. And then it puts, it really puts them in a box because I, I do what they want. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I'll be like, nah, I can't do that because that's just too, too, and I, I can't shift in this area. But in most cases, it limits them and it limits what I'm able to create. And then they see something I've done for somebody else. And they like, I want something more like that. Well, you got to give me room. You know what I'm saying? You got to let the Lord like have his way. Like, just trust me a little bit. So don't restrict the creative's gift. Um, don't deny God the new thing he wants to do and block the advancement of your ministry's influence, your church's influence um, with unbelievers because you can't see it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I did a creative scope a, a while ago. It's on my YouTube channel, Lola Kabaya. But um, I think it's, I forgot what it's called at the moment. But anyways, if you go on YouTube, Lola Kabaya Creatives, you'll probably see it. But anyways, I talked about how... Um, Give me one minute.
don't deny that, that, that that's going to unbelieve it because you can. I talked about how creatives basically help to bring vision to life. So when you are, and this is not in the sense of you just painting, writing, drawing. This is for innovators and consultants too. Um, thank you, Gigi. But they help to take something and bring it to life. So if you can't see it, it's okay because it's their job to see the vision, to catch it, and to bring it to life, okay? So um, in 2016, I released a message on creatives. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. In the um, last quarter of the year, Lana Vosser, she's a dope prophet out of Australia. You guys follow her website, lanavosser.com. Um, she released a message on God's creativity. And on January the 12th of 2017, Dr. Matthew Stevenson sounded off on it at, um, as a part of his annual prophetic word. And I'm going to read like some of what he said about creatives. But if you go to YouTube and look on Cookie Truth's YouTube channel, um, and just type in Matthew Stevenson, Word of the Lord 2017. This is going to come up. So it starts around the 100, excuse me, the 11, 20 minute mark. And let me just drink a little bit of tea, sorry. All right. So he said, this is the year for the creatives and the artistics. There is a sudden release of the creative anointing. Now, a part of why I called this conference, Lord, do it again, was because the Lord has charged us to describe, to give a language to the next move of God. So we're going to give you a lot of vocabulary for what God wants to do next. And what we're about to see, I believe, in the season is going to be a lot like the latter rain movement, a lot like Azusa. But there's a difference. There is a difference. Excuse me. Social media. Listen to me. We would still be in the reverberating face of Azusa if there were a Facebook and if there were a Twitter and if the if there were things to elongate the rumors. Social media. You got to get on social media. I am such like the most reserved person. Like I'm totally private. I don't want all of that. Gigi, I appreciate you scribing for me. I, I don't I don't like all of that. Like I, I don't like the intrusiveness of social media sometimes, but you gotta be on social media and you gotta engage your audience. You gotta do that. Like we have no choice. This is the, the wave that we're in. And um if you're not on Facebook, Facebook is the largest social media platform altogether. Um the the majority of people that are on there are older. They're outside of the millennial age group, but it's still a powerful tool because it's the largest platform. Most of the people are on there. There's billions of subscribers to Facebook. Beyond that, you have Twitter, you have Instagram, and you have Snapchat. These are things that a lot of millennials like to be on, and these are the people that you want to begin to captivate and influence. You also, I hate it. Every Listen, every time you see me get on social media and talk, it's a testament to my love for God and me offering up my body and my life and my mouth to him and my pen to him as a living sacrifice. So I appreciate you, Gigi. Pinterest is something else you need to get on if you're not on there. As far as Twitter, Twitter is the number one social media site for news. People are going to the new, going to get news from Twitter. <laughs> it's the number one social media site for news. And I got that information from Pew Research Center. I think I read it maybe about four to five weeks ago. Um, what else? What else? What else? I'm sorry. I should have made notes and I didn't make notes about all of these things. So you need to be on Twitter. You need to be on Facebook. Absolutely. I would say if you can get on Instagram, Pinterest, start getting on those sites. Um, Pinterest is dope because people just pin things that interest them, their ideas, and they create boards, and the boards organize the stuff into categories. But if you have like a lot of um, infographics or graphics with quotes, you can do that. Or if you're someone who prays will, really well, create prayers on graphics and post them. You will be surprised who comes and looks at it. On one of my Instagram accounts, somebody reposted my stuff. This person is not a believer. They reposted one of my quotes. Take the wisdom of the Lord and wrap it in the language of today. And they will catch it. And then you never know who's going to start following you. And you can begin to influence them. Okay, let me get back to Matthew Stevenson's word from the Lord. I believe that God is about to pour out his spirit to make creative artists and artistic geniuses. 
Now, we're family. We know that the church has not traditionally been a place where the creatives are known. They're afraid to dress well or else y'all are going to talk about them. They're afraid to get trained in anything. Any instrument other than the organ is seen as unnecessary. You know, we're not necessarily, you know, one of the things that we run into when we first get saved. It's how horrible a lot of the church music is. They're afraid to really explore their creative niche. But I believe that something's being poured out among writers, among poets, among painters, and among graphic designers. You will experience the visitations of God that not just bring you into dust and feathers. It's going to bring you into creative genius. It's going to bring you into a realm of expression where your ability to translate, I love this, translate heaven, how dope is that? To translate the, and then he said the like three times, I'm not going to repeat all of that. Translate the artistic nature of heaven onto earth and it's going to actually appeal to the agnostics. Agnostic is one who doubts the belief in God. You know, one who questions this. So it's going to, it's an evangelism tool is what the Lord is doing with it. <laughs> and that's what I wrote about in Millennials, Creatives, and Jesus. You can go to the Smoking Prophet for that. And I think I released that in, in maybe like August of 2016. All right. So here's the word of the Lord. God is reaching for those that have an indifferent heart posture. Like they really don't care either way towards him. And he's going to do so through the creative anointing. Listen to me. If you are creative, if you are an innovator, if you are an artistic person, it's time for you to stop thinking less of yourselves like preachers are more necessary than you. Did you guys hear this and forget about this message? If you heard this message when he released this, I think it was January 12th, 2017, you need to go back and listen to it. All of it because it was a lot of great stuff, but you need to listen to this and let this get back in your spirit and cause you to jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up. You must begin to, and he's talking about creatives here. So let me just insert the word creatives. Yeah, you need the cookie truth. Well, if you just go to YouTube and type in, thank you, Gigi, type in um, um, word of the Lord, Matthew Stevenson for 2017, it'll come up. But um, so here, listen to me. If you are creative, if you are an innovator, if you are an artistic person, it's time for you to stop thinking less of yourselves like preachers are more necessary than you. You must begin to identify as a minister. You are not just a graphic designer. You are not just an organist. You are not just a sculptor, sculptor or a painter. You know, don't let anyone um, downgrade you. Don't let anyone look down on the gifting and the part that you have to offer to the body of Christ and to the earth. You know, we're all important. We're all an extension of God's body. We're all an extension of each other. So no one is greater than the other. But don't let anyone think of you. Like, oh, that's you just got a little gift. What? No, my gift is amazing. And and my gift is special. My gift is unique. There's no one that can do what I do. Even if there are people that run in the same vein and realm as me, they can't do it like me. And I'm going to use it to glorify God. I'm going to use it to draw men to him. I'm going to use it to influence and impact the world and to change my uh, my region and to change my community and to change those that are around me, right? All right. So you are a carrier of a prophetic renaissance that's being poured out even in the spirit and God's using men like you to provide us with scenery and architecture and resemblances of the throne room of God so that when we say on earth as it is in heaven, we literally have tangible signs and witnesses of what it's like. And he said that God was going to pour out his creativity in three areas, evangelism, worship, and prayer. But if you listen between... And go to Cookie Truth's video because some other people have the video. It's longer and I don't have the minute marks right. But if you go to Cookie Truth um, and listen between the 11 um, minutes and 27, excuse, and 20 second mark up until the 19 minute and 49 second mark, then you'll be able to listen to all of that. So we're amid this. We're amid this thing that God is doing. We're right in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? The creative flow is not going to stop. This innovative flow is not going to stop. Technology is going to continue to advance. You know, don't be as, as the people who said writing was demonic. And, and they created writing in order to tally up receipts and organize information. That's why it was created. But don't be as, as those people, you know, just because we don't know about it. Oh, it's demonic. Nah, you need to get with it. Learn it. Ask the Lord what he wants to show you about it. Ask him if he wants to partner you with somebody else that can help you, you know, push whatever you got to push. 
Um, but embrace it. Whatever you do, embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Because it's the Father. It's God. He's moving within it. And he, he doesn't want us to keep being behind on information. He's like, dang, I got to catch y'all up. And if y'all would come on and not resist me, you know, be as Paul, is it hard for you to kick against the pricks or is it hard for you to kick against the goats? You know, is it hard for you to resist what I'm doing? That's what he was saying to Paul in Acts 9 when Jesus came in. Is it hard for you to resist what I'm doing? So that's what God is saying to us as he transitions us, as he attempts to, to um, reform us. You know, is it hard for you to press against what I'm doing? Stop pressing against what I'm doing and just move with me, partner with me. This is this is what I've asked you to do. I'm the paraclete. I'm the Holy Spirit, meaning I walk with you. I travel with you. I long to be with you. I long to put you in places that others wouldn't be able to put you and I long to give you information and, and insights that men don't know about that they haven't even seen yet. I remember months ago I had a dream where I just saw all of these videos just flashing before my eyes and it overstimulated me in my sleep. It really, really got on my nerves. I was like, Lord, I don't like this. And the father was showing me, okay, this is what's coming. You know, videos are it about three years ago when me and my um, people got on Snapchat a little bit early. And thank you, Lord, for reminding me of that because I'm going to say that. Um, and I told one of my friends, I was like, videos are the next wave. And then we see Periscope emerge probably maybe 12 months or something after that. I don't know. Time moves so fast, it seems like now. But we see Periscope emerge. And like that's that's video stuff. But now you got um, infographics that are um, visualized. They're, 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 excuse me, not visualized. They're animated. You know, people are doing short videos to catch your attention, flashing lights. You know what I'm saying? That can invoke a seizure on somebody. But that's what we're in. And the Lord was showing me, hey, this is where you're going and you're not going to like this. Okay, so the Lord is able to do that. He's able to come to us in our dreams and tell us this technology is coming out. Or, hey, I got something I want you to start up. And what surprises me is that a lot of us believers, we were on Periscope before the unbelievers. Now you see news stations that are live streaming on Periscope. You see Kim Kardashian live streaming on Periscope. How long we've been on Periscope? A long time, right? I haven't been on Periscope. I don't know how long. It's been over a year I've been on Periscope. We were on here first, but like we, if we just stay in tune and we don't resist the Father, He'll give us stuff. He'll move us in the direction, right? He'll move us in the direction that we're supposed to be in. All right, so... It's time for the church to get ahead of the curve on innovation and pioneer new things in the earth. This effort requires that we shift and that we change. And change doesn't mean compromise. Change does not mean compromise, okay? Don't get caught up in, oh, this means that I'm going to compromise something. Change doesn't mean compromise, okay? Don't let, don't let that stop you. Just filter it through the Holy Spirit. And filter it through people you can trust. If you think something is a little bit too out there, go to your group. There is safety in a multitude of counsel. Like, go and talk to somebody that you know you can trust. And let them filter that thing through the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, if you have the Holy Spirit, God himself, the internal one, the omnipotent one, the one that knows everything, living on the inside of you, then why are those without him? Thank you, Tynetta excelling more than you are why are people without the holy spirit excelling more than we are i'm not okay with that at all we got the holy spirit the greatest resource in the earth we should be beyond where they are so let the lord catch you up and let him move you further and uh, meditate on luke 16 and 8 and this is the parable of the shrewd manager meditate on that and ask the Lord to give you insight on that and what it can do for you. So a few quick things that I just want to talk to you about and just share with you if you're trying to do anything, trying to launch anything. So websites and landing pages. What do you do? Like, hey, I don't know which one I want. Do I want a website or do I want a landing page? If you run a blog like me, like the smokingprofit.com, you need a website. Um, you are going to need more than just a one page you know, stand off, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you can't just have a one-pager and scroll down and that's it. No, I need room to put my catalog and, and put my information out there. 
if you don't run anything like a blog like me, you can do a landing page. A landing page is just a one page website. You can put, put a couple of pieces of information out there, um, use it to collect email addresses, um, you know, use it to refer them someone else, you can do that. Um, so consider that before you say, hey, I need a whole website, and then you maybe you really don't need a website, you know what I'm saying? Um, also, when you're offering people content, you don't want to overload them with information. Giving people too much information and too many choices actually makes it harder to make a decision. I read this dope book by this psychologist, and she cited um, this little study that some... Um, kids had to do and they sold ice cream or no it was actually like jam or something they were selling jam in a store but one group only offered people a few options maybe like three another group offered people like 20 options and then tried to get them to buy the people that had 20 options it was a lot harder to stick and cause them to make a purchase because they just had too many things to choose from. So if you're offering a service, if you're selling somebody something, organize it, keep it simple. Maybe do like three things and keep it moving. All right, so email and text marketing. Emails are great. Um, I hate them personally, and I believe that there will be a shift and that um, <laughs> I, I don't just believe there will be a shift. I know there's going to be a shift. And emails are not going to be as, um, emails will become archaic. I believe that. I really, really do. I think that if you're going to grow your email list, grow your email list. That's great. Um, as you build loyalty, people will look at your emails. Um, but I think that you also need to look into text marketing. Um, people, again, millennials are shifting culture, right? Um, you have suicide hotlines that allow people to text. And um, I'll get on that. Thank you, Gigi suicide hotlines that allow people to text and talk to them you know what I'm saying so um, be able to offer your 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 market back you know what I'm saying and not only that like text messages they come right to your phone they're right in your face so they're really really amazing I like texts better than emails but deal with both um, also push your notifications so notifications are something that you see with apps all the time. If you have an app on your phone, you'll probably get a message saying, hey, can we send you stuff from time to time? So this means when you're not in the app, when the app is not open, it'll still send messages through, right? So you want to enable stuff like that if you have a website because it's not likely that people are coming to your website all the time. So this is a way to get them to come back. You know, they're sitting up and all of a sudden they see a notification that you've posted something new or you have something to offer them. If you have Facebook, you probably enable Facebook to do that and you'll see it, okay? All right, so the next thing is um, apps. I have apps on here. So I would definitely invest in an app if you can do it. Um, I don't have an app yet personally. I don't know if I'll do one anytime soon because I'll probably try to build it myself. And that means I'm going to have to take some more time to learn. But it's some um, websites like BillFire.com. Um, I think I researched them maybe about three years ago when I first started my blog. But um, you can go on there and actually build an app yourself or you can hire a developer and have them help you with that. So you just want to, again, start moving with the market and go from there. Um, audio messages, Gigi asked me that question, absolutely. Again, people are, are getting presented with so much information. They're being inundated with so much. It's coming visually, it's coming through the auditory realm. You want to engage and captivate them in whatever way you can. And a lot of people like to multitask, even though it isn't the best thing to do, right? It can be excessive. But, um, yeah, so you definitely want to get on, like, audio messages. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. When I'm at work, I listen to audiobooks, or either I'm on YouTube listening to stuff and doing my work at the same time. So, um, yeah, you want to do audio messages. You want to do podcasts. You want to engage your audience with videos. You know, you want to find a way to captivate them. There's so much stuff vying for people's attention. You really got to figure out, like, a way, how can I captivate them? And if you're just like like me when the Lord first like, started dealing with me, like, I need you to talk a little bit more. I'm like, I don't want to talk. Like, I just let me write. I'm comfortable with that. Like, I can just write, say what I want to, you know what I'm saying? But I start talking, then you're going to start giving me stuff, and I'm going to go all the way, all over the place. Like, I don't want to do that. But he's like, people aren't going to read the way you want them to read. People aren't doing that. 
Like they're not going to your blog and reading it like that. You're going to have to get on and do some videos. Beyond that, you're going to have to, um, you know, do some audio messages. So I have a podcast. You know, um, I think I spent the last two weeks working on getting my podcast on TuneIn. And TuneIn, I remember when they first started, that was like over five years ago. It was called TuneIn Radio. I used to listen to radio stations from different places um, on TuneIn. But, you know, they're big on like podcasts now. Right, but we got to do it. So, um, Holly Parson, I just um, pray for you right now. Father, I just thank you that you didn't give her a spirit of fear, but that you've adopted her into your family. Father, she's been adopted in and she doesn't have to be fearful of anything in accordance to Romans 8 and 15. I thank you that um, anything that is unnatural, that is causing her to be reserved and causing her to be shy, we just pray that it just breaks off right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for her voice. I thank you that her voice is powerful. I thank you that um, you place an anointing in her voice to compel men, God. I thank you for the strong evangelistic pull that's on her life, God, and that she's going to cause many people to come to Christ, Father, even people that already know you, God, who think they know you, Father, those people who, who profess you with their lips, but their hearts are far from you, God. She's going to even be able to draw those in, God. So I just break off everything that's muzzling her mouth, Father. All fear be broken off of her now in Jesus name everything be broken off her mind that would cause her to think that she can't say the words and they don't come out right father I thank you that you're the one who said in Matthew 10 father that um, that at the time that we would have to speak it wouldn't be even be us speaking father but it will be you speaking through us God I thank you that you will speak through her God and I thank you that fear is coming off now in Jesus name so just go for it just do it okay the more you do it the more um the more natural it will become and that's to never say that you will be completely in the place of where like oh i got this you know god will never put us out there like that because we always need to be relying on him i heard sean bolts the other day he's a really dope teacher on the word of knowledge but i was listening to a sid roth message of him and he said that every time he goes out to do something he he has a bit of anxiety you know where he's still like uh ah. But um, he, he appreciates it and he just goes with it because then he knows like it's really, really God. And when we deal with, um, you know, rebuilding people's lives and and dealing with the prophetic and releasing the word of the Lord, we can never become confident in ourselves because the information that we get isn't coming from ourselves. Right. So I encourage you to listen to Sean Boltz. Um, look up on YouTube, Sean Boltz, Sid Roth, Word of Knowledge, and you'll find it. All right, and something else um, I just wanted to share while I was praying for y'all, I thought about this. I hated my voice as a kid growing up. I hated it. I've been on here longer than what I wanted to, so we about to wrap this thing right on up. But I hated my voice as a kid. I hated it. I used to record it and listen to it, and I hated it. And then my cousin from D.C., he would be like, man, like, I hate how you talk. I'm like, I hate how I talk, too. But I understand why the enemy came at my voice so early, right? I understand why, because now... Now my voice is something that I'm using to sound off for the Father, okay? So my website, I saw somebody ask that. It's called thesmokingprophet.com. But I went ahead and moved like the Lord wanted me to move. And I've set up my podcast. It's on TuneIn. It's on iTunes. And it's also on SoundCloud. So if you go and search any of those places, either, either search The Smoking Prophet or at Lola Kabaya, you're going to find it, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love you guys so much. So um, I'm going to leave you all with this. If you're a creative person like me, or if you're not a creative person, you want to understand the creative people in your life, please go to my website, thesmokingprofit.com. Go to an article called Welcoming the Artist by Adela Just. This is someone who writes with, um, thank you, appreciate you. This is someone who writes with General's um, Ministry out in Texas where it's Cindy Jacobs runs it and stuff but go and look that up because it's going to have some information to give you insight on you your nature as an artist and if you're not an artist it'll help you to understand the artists that you're around um, and this isn't just artists as in people that paint and people that draw this is for the creative the innovator you know they can be the makeup artist they can be the fashion stylist if you go to my youtube um, channel and look at that video where i talked about creativity i talked about creatives in the bible like They've been existed for a way long time. They were um, the ones that helped to, to build and to furnish the tabernacle of God. You know what I'm saying? Um, they were the Tabithas that, that made clothes for the poor. You know, they were the scribes, Ezra, 
who wrote and recorded the word of the Lord. You know, they were the ones that did all of these things. They were the teachers. They were the consultants. Daniel. Um, yes, they, um, they were the consultants. Daniel. Joseph. They would have been called consultants in our time. That's what they would have been called, but they were creatives, okay? No, I'm not from Texas. I'm actually from North Carolina, so that's where I'm out at now. Yep, yep, yep. But please go and um, check it out. Something else that I got on the Smoking Prophet for you is seven ways to cultivate your creativity. So if you're looking to help to invigorate the creative inside of you, go and pull that up. And also the first post I talked about, Millennials, Creatives, and Jesus that the Lord gave me way long time ago. All right, so I'm out of here. And I'm getting off. Oh, one other thing. If you're a creative that works in the corporate world, I have a video on YouTube and also on my podcast to address that. It's um, creatives in the corporate world or something. <laughs> okay, nice. I hope that um, you were okay with the recent flooding that took place in Houston. Does anybody have any questions before I get off of here? Because, again, I've been on um, too long. And I think that the coals come on at 12 o'clock. If you don't follow Apostle um, Jean and Valora Cole, please follow them. They, um, oh man, praying for you, um, restoration and all of that stuff. But please follow them. Um, they do midnight scopes. Yeah. All right, so I'm out of here. I want to get off um, because I know they're going to be on and, and I like their ministry. So I'll probably listen to that. And that's it. Who do I recommend for text marketing? I looked up a couple of places. The place that I ended up going with is slicktext.com. This would be the, and, and like when it comes to recommendations, new stuff comes out every day. So it's kind of hard to give a recommendation because stuff is always changing. It's always progressing so fast. But this is what I would say when you're looking up a place to um, do text marketing. Um, they have subscription plans. You don't want to deal with anybody that has a plan that, will let you go over your allotted messages and charge you extra. So if you do that, you just want to make sure you watch it. Me, I can't do that because I'm not going to be watching it like that. I'm a mom. I got too much going on with life. So I went with them because they they actually will not let you go over your allotted messages. So I didn't want to deal with, you know, all of a sudden I'm looking. I'm like, why is this charge coming out of my account? Okay. Hope that answered your question. I'm out of here. I love you guys. I'm going to bed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord made me do it because, again, I wasn't coming on here. Oh, I got Araceli. Met, um, excuse me. I pronounced your name wrong. I said Araceli, but it's Araceli. Sorry about that. Araceli Macbeth is on here. Um, please go fo follow her. She actually just wrote a message um, for me. It's on this. Well, it's not for me. She wrote it, and then I was like, hey, I need this. So she let me use it. So thank you. I appreciate you so much. But um, a message on how one picture changed her outlook on Halloween. That's on the smokingprofit.com. She's going to be writing a lot more and doing a lot more stuff. She also has a business. Her and her 16 year old daughter, they make t shirts. She's based in Chi Town. So um, pull that article up. Look at it. There's a picture on there, which is really amazing because I was like, wow, this would have made me change my outlook on Halloween too. So yeah, definitely check her out. Um, Dr. Calicia, grace and peace to you. I see you down there. Please go follow her. Dr. Calicia, please say something. Um, if you're listening, I know oftentimes you're listening and not really hands-on, but please follow her. Um, she's amazing. She will um, share a lot of, uh, thank you. She will share a lot of great scopes with you. And I hope you do do your message on, I think you said spiritual guides the other day. You know what I'm hearing about too? Um, spiritual spirit animals. I wish somebody would talk about that. And I'm going to be releasing a message soon on crystals because I've seen an insurgence of information on people using crystals for therapy and the shift energy and all that stuff. So I want to talk about it, right? And let me see who else. Follow Gigi. She's on there. Follow Gigi. She scopes and she's going to be scoping a lot more. And as I um, get to know some of you all, you know, I'll definitely recommend you and go from there. As the Lord leads me, um, nothing I ever do is meant to be offensive. And I love you all. And I'm out of here. I'm really tired. Good night. <laughs>